it seems to me that even if we ultimately decide that religion as a term is unhelpful, surely there is something that can be said about the distinction between the religious and cultural traditions to the west of Kashmir, let's say, and to the east uh, of Kashmir. Whether we want to attribute those differences primarily to historical contingency or whether we want to argue, as I would, that they have strongly influenced by climactic factors like desertification in the Middle East, there does seem to be a big difference between, in, in many respects, between the monotheistic varieties of religion in the western part of the Afro-Eurasian continent. I'm just arbitrarily use, a bit arbitrarily using Kashmir as a standard, and the eastern part, where the, the, the religions of East and South Asia can scarcely even be described as polytheistic. They're you know, more of a, typically more of a panentheistic or philosophical or cultural variety. There does seem to be, at the very least, one major distinction between East and West, with, which has a historical and theological basis. Is there not? Well, again, many words and categories are useful up until the point that they are not Probably useful anymore. So we can use some terms in order to discuss, but we must also be aware of the of their limits. For example, you mentioned uh, religious differences. Ferdia mentioned the question of the categorical distinction between religion and non-religion. The first question was about religious language. Well, because these questions are important, I think we should really ask ourselves about their limits. For example, okay, religious language. You mentioned Genesis. Is mindfulness religious language? Is wellness culture religious language? Is the very trendy today discussion in the US concerning essentialism versus nominalism, by the way, a medieval theological distinction on gender religious language, whether there is gender essentialism or not, etc., etc. So, you know, if the discussion, not our discussion, the general discussion in the world, in the public sphere, is to be serious, we have to, I think, we have to be aware of the very limits of these words. Because it's very easy to say religious language and refer to the Bible while not being aware that mindfulness, wellness culture, nominalism versus, versus essentialism in gender, etc., that these are not religious language. That's why I insist, you know, it's, it's not a magician's hat trick or a, or a theologian's perspective to elude you know, to, to shy away from certain answers, etc. Uh, if we are not to discuss such issues in the way that political parties would discuss that, that is with ready-made categories, but really look to the deep, then we have to reconceptualize certain issues. For example, in the very beginning, you mentioned Jordan Peterson, which now appears as a defender of religion and traditional culture, etc. Well, Jordan Peterson is anything but... <laughs> you know, a specimen of somebody coming out of traditional religions and giving witness to them. Actually, he's but neither, much neither was Immanuel more... Kant, though. Neither was Kant. It's it didn't course. stop him having a dev or, or Descartes didn't stop them having devastating effects. Uh, the effect is one thing, and uh, I will also uh, mention a counter example uh, shortly. But still, you know, you see that even the defenders of religion for example, whatever that might be, and whichever particular religious community that might be. Because if a, a word makes sense, this is religious community, communities of meaning, purpose, ritual, and community, rather than, you know, again, a check bo check boxes in order to be ticked with convictions. Then the situation is more nuanced because Jordan Peterson seems to speak about different things. And again, of mental landscapes and traditions as Jungian archetypes and all these things we have, which have nothing to do with traditional religions. Again, with book recommendations, there is this fascinating book and a very easy read, by the way, by Tara Isabella Barton, Strange Rites, New Religions for a Godless World, in which she shows how practices and uh, trends that are not usually categorized as religion like mindfulness, wellness culture, fandom, even, even the contemporary political debate on alt-right on the one hand and whatever, wokeness on the other, uh, how these are very much religious indeed and things that provide and in which one we can include it in get, in, and get those meaning, purpose, ritual and community as he sums up uh, religion. 